Welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn three different ways to use the duotone effect to enhance your images. Okay, so for our first image, we're just going to use it to learn the basics of what a duotone effect is. And basically, the easiest way to do that is to go over here to our adjustment layers, this circle, like half circle thing, click on it, and add a gradient map. You can see it adds it up here. And if we look at it, it looks like a photocopy version at the start. The reason why that is, is because whatever's on the left of this gradient, whatever color or shade or whatever's on the left, is going to impact or map to the darkest regions of our image. And whatever's on the right of this gradient is going to map to the lighter parts of our image. So in this case, it's kind of opposite to what we want. We could click reverse, and that would give us a, a more accurate of the darks to the dark and the lights to the light. But let's unclick that and just click on the gradient to bring up the gradient editor so we can pick exactly what we want. You can select from the presets up here. So there is presets and you can click through them. But let's just ignore that for now. And let's just go down here and pick our own. So whatever you have down here, it might be black and white, white, black, doesn't matter. Just click on the box and then click down here on the color. That's going to bring up the color that we want to select. And remember, whatever's to the left here is going to map to our darker regions. So I'm actually going to pick maybe like a darkish kind of red, kind of purpley look in there for my darks. And I'm going to click OK. And then on this other side, I'm going to click on this box, click on here, and I'm going to pick a color that works with it. So complementary colors usually work pretty well. But, and you can just play around and, and see what you like, but I'm going to pick maybe like a yellow to start, something like, like this. I think that looks kind of good together, something like that. And I'm going to click OK. And OK once again. So now we can see that our gradient goes from that dark kind of red purpley to a lighter kind of yellow. But based on those same principles, you can actually add a third color in here if you want by just clicking on it and then going down here and clicking a box to wherever you want. Now, when you click in here, I would suggest not going too dark. It's going to look all crazy unless that's the look that you want. And don't go too bright. Uh, try and stay somewhere in the middle in here. And you probably don't want to veer too far off from your original color. So you don't want to, I think it looks, if you go too far off, then that color dominates the midtones and then you lose the other colors. So I would suggest saying, fairly close to what you had before and maybe just going off just a little bit so you can impact it just a little bit more. And that's going to impact the midtones unless you slide this over and it'll give a different look there or if you want to slide it back closer to the darks. So if you want kind of a mix in here of your darks, then you can go in and maybe pick a slightly different color that's off a little bit to create that different effect. But you can see that now it's confused. It doesn't really know what to do with those two colors because they're both into the dark. So maybe something like that, that looks pretty good. So just slightly off from red, click OK and OK. And now we have a new look. So that's what it originally was. And I'll go forward and that's what we have now. That's the tri-color effect. At this point, there's a few other basic things that you can do to mess with your image as well. So if we go over to our gradient map, we can actually drop the opacity a bit if you want to kind of take off how strong the effect is applying to your image. So you can kind of downgrade it a little bit. And you can also add other adjustments down here if you want. So let's just go to maybe levels and you can change kind of the you know contrast and whatever of your image to make maybe the effect uh, pop a little bit more. And you can also try some of these different uh, blend modes to see if you can get a different look as well. For the next duotone effects that I'm going to show you, we're going to use this image that already has the basic duotone applied to it. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is add kind of an extra gradient to your image. To do that, let's go over and click on our very top layer. So for me, it's this curves adjustment layer. And then go down here to this box with the plus and add a new blank layer. Then go over to your gradient tool, so the one that's right below the eraser right here. And up top, we can see that same looking gradient thing that we had before. And when we click on it, we get the same gradient editor. This time, instead of messing manually, I'm just going to pick a preset. So let's just say this reds 7 one here looks pretty good. 
and I'm gonna click OK. You can pick from different looking gradients up here, but I'm just gonna click this second one, a radial gradient. And then all you do is wherever you click first, that's gonna be this color, and it's gonna do a gradient to whatever this color is. So I'm gonna click up here, kind of drag out like this, and make a gradient. But I think I want it to just be kind of more so at the top, so that this, this part is gonna affect it a lot more than the purple. So if I kind of go like that, then yes, it's covering everything, but let's just go to our blend modes here and maybe drop it down to either hue or color. And I'm also gonna drop the opacity down so that my original colors kind of come through and this gradient is just, the radial part is just affecting the top corner up here. So that's before and that's after. Next, I'm gonna show you how to apply a secondary duotone effect to shapes and text that you've added to your image. The first step is gonna to be to duplicate our original image and the gradient. So click on your original image, hold control and click on the gradient that went with it, the gradient map, and then go control J to duplicate those. And then just click on this little folder right here to put them in a group. Then open the group and click on the thumbnail little gradient part here of your gradient map so we can change this to something else. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm just gonna use that same red seven preset, that's okay, and uh, click okay. And now you can see that that is applied to the whole image, which we don't want. We just want it to apply to, for example, this heart or the text that says duotone, or maybe like have kind of a part of your image uh, sectioned off in a whole other shape. So I'm gonna show you one at a time. So make sure the eyeball, whatever shape that you've brought in or made yourself or text or whatever, Make sure the eyeball is clicked off once you've made the shape or brought it in. Then all you do is you click on the folder where it says group, the actual folder, then hold control and just click on the shape that you wanna map it to, that you wanna create a selection and put it in that shape. Then all you have to do is click the mask right here. And now you can see that you have a secondary duotone effect applied to whatever was in the circle and then it did not impact whatever we had outside the circle. And once again, you can change the opacity and drop this down to dampen the effect or to change the way that it looks for your image. And then if you wanna do the other ones, I'm just gonna right click here and delete my layer mask. The exact same thing, just make sure you're clicked on the group, hold control and click on the T for the text. It'll make the outline and then just mask it. And then now you'll have that over here. And for the shape, same thing, just make sure you're clicked on the folder hold control, click on the shape, and put the mask on it. Now, you might be looking at this going, well, oh man, I didn't want that to be there. You wanna move your shape or move the text around? Well, that's really easy. All you have to do is unclick this little chain right here, and then click on the mask, and then you can just go control T, and you can move and resize and turn and rotate and everything, the shape or text or whatever you're doing to the spot that you want and then just click check and there you go. And then finally, I'm gonna use this third image to show you how to get rid of the background, design your own background, and then add like a drop shadow or something as well. To separate my subject from the background, I'm gonna click on that image and then I'm gonna to go to the fourth one down here, right click if you don't see it, it's quick selection tool, and I'm just gonna use select subject. If you have a different way to select your subject and mask it out, you can do it. If you don't know how to cut things out in Photoshop, then just look up videos on how to select and mask. I'll also have one linked in the description below. Now that you've cut out your subject, let's add a background color. So if you don't have any layers below your image layer, just click on it and go to the adjustment layers here and click on solid color. If you have a background, click on that and do this. And for right now, just pick any color. That's fine. You can see that it's clipped to this right now, but we wanna just drag this below. So now it's gonna be behind our subject. And then let's double click back on it so that we can pick the color that we want. So I'm just gonna kinda of scan through real quick and pick something that I think I like. I think something like that maybe, and click okay. Next, we're just gonna make a drop shadow so it doesn't look like she's just floating in nothingness. To do that, click on your subject layer 
and then double click over to the right of it. So this layer style window will open up, then just click on drop shadow, not on the little box here, but on the actual word drop shadow. So this menu opens up. And then to be honest, it doesn't really matter what you put here. I just slid the distance up so you could see where the drop shadow is, but it doesn't really matter. And then just click okay. Next, we're gonna right click on where it says drop shadow and go create layer, then click okay and that will make the shadow into its own layer over here by itself. Then we're just gonna go Control T so that we can squash our shadow. Just make sure up here that this chain is unclicked. So make sure it's not like that. Make sure it's unclicked so that we can squash it down, line it up to where you want, rotate it if you need to, get it into place, and then just click check when you're good. Now, since the duotone effect is kind of an artsy thing by itself, you could actually leave the drop shadow like that. I think it looks okay for this design, but if you wanna blur it out like normal, just go up to filter, blur, and go to Gaussian blur, and then just mess around with the level, the slider here until you get the look that you want. Click okay. And then you can mess around with fill and opacity to refine the look of your shadow as well. And then just as a final touch, I'm gonna to add some shapes into the background as well. But I have to be careful because whatever I put as a shape in there is gonna be impacted by this gradient as well. So to kind of counteract that, what we're gonna do is click on that gradient, hold Alt, and then click and drag it to be below the shadow. So now it looks like it's double, which it is for the background. So this one now impacts the background and then this gradient up here, all we're gonna do is right click on it over here and go create clipping mask. So now this one is only impacting this image and this one is only impacting the background. Then we're gonna click on the gradient layer that's below the shadow and click on this square with the plus in it to add a blank layer, which is the layer we're gonna add our shapes to now. You can use the pen tool, the shape tool, whatever. All I'm gonna do is use the brush tool and I'm going to make sure my hardness is all the way up at 100%, opacity at 100%, and I'm just gonna play with my scale here to make different size circles. So the first one, I'm gonna plunk in there as white, that looks fine, and then I'm gonna click on here to change it, change to be, let's say, like a little bit of a pink color like that, and I'm gonna plunk maybe that one in kind of over there, and then uh, maybe I'll keep that color and just make a bigger one, maybe kind of double-ish the size, around 21 something, and click over there to make one there. And then maybe in the top corner here, I'll make uh, one that's slightly darker, kind of like that. But now I just feel like they stick out too much, so I'm gonna go back over to opacity and kind of turn them down a bit to kind of mute them into the background. So there you go. There's a whole bunch of ways to mess with duotone images. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.